Welcome to Startup Seattle. I'm Michael Grappa. Coming up, we'll visit a startup that really is working out of a co-founder's garage. Also, we'll put three founders on the launch pad while they deliver their best elevator pitch in about a minute. Then I'll get to talk to each one of them individually. Now we're brought to you by our sponsor, Seed IP. Now IP stands for intellectual property and they know how to protect yours. That's because Seed IP is in the business of protecting ideas. Now, have a legal question about your startup idea or invention? Give Seed IP a call and they will be able to help. Now this show is also a startup, so we're learning a lot from your feedback. Now one way you can give us feedback is through a tool called Emojot. Now while you're watching today, you can tell us how you feel about it throughout the show. Just open emojot.com slash team in a browser on any device and click on an emoji and let us know how you feel. But first, I'll be joined by an interesting founder who has a company that's really focused on mission. He'll share some of the lessons he's learned from his first startup, founded at the ripe age of 22. And we'll talk about how to build a strong team for any type of company. My guest today is Mark Barros. He's the co-founder of Moment, the best tool in the world for mobile photographers. Now, shortly after graduating from the University of Washington at the ripe age of 22, Mark co-founded Contour in 2004 and led the organization from a garage to a multi-million dollar company with thousands of customers around the world, and also got fired in the process. So Mark, welcome to the show. Let's, uh, let's, let's get right into it. So you got fired from your first company, but really what I think makes you a great guest for this is because you came back with more enthusiasm and obviously much smarter. So, so tell us, what did you learn by getting fired in your first company. That sounds really smart or really stupid. <laughs> but uh, I started the first company when I was 20 years old, right? I think it was like a first relationship, like who you marry at 20 and who you are d is different at 30. And so I spent about 10 years building that first company. I just learned a bunch. I just spent my 20s growing up as a person, as an entrepreneur. Along the way, when you, you started these little side projects and this little company and you're a founder, and then you take on investors and you become a CEO, there's two very different worlds. And I just didn't understand how to go from a founder to a CEO. At the end of the day, when you raise money and you're a CEO, you have a job to do. At some point, if you're not the best person to lead it, they're going to take you out and find someone else that's going to lead it. And so I just learned a lot personally around that whole cycle from founding all the way through to somebody ending it for you. So, so tell us, what is Moment about? Yeah, Moment's about mobile photography. We just found in the time off between companies, you kind of start like, what are you passionate about? And so we started with a side project, some lenses, put it on your phone, put it on Kickstarter, raised five and a grand, and that went from, okay, it's a little more than a side project to a little company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so now we're about 12 people and having a lot of fun. For a first-time founder, you know, give us some advice of how do you take that idea and make it into a real company? I like starting with lots of projects, like lots of side projects, right? So spending your time on the weekend doing it, right? Spending your off hours doing it, like finding different groups of people that maybe you'd want to work with together. It just takes a lot of time of like tinkering with different projects or different ideas or different things you're passionate about. And then people, because the mixture of not just the idea, but who you're going to start it with takes time. Like you don't just walk up to the bar and date somebody like, hey, let's get married. Like you get to know each other. And so I love like startup weekends or side projects or like if people aren't going to spend their nights and weekends on this project with you, then they're just not a good fit. And so early on, you're trying to figure out not just the product and idea, but the people. And I think those two elements are really important. And so I love doing lots of side projects. And maybe one of them clicks. It's like, oh my gosh, this really works. Customers love it. We got a product out. There's more than a project. But Moment started as a side project. Like we all spent a couple days a week on it. And then we got to Kickstarter. I was like, okay, there's interest. We spent more time on it. And so you just kind of naturally let it evolve from just some, something that's fun to like, okay, there's actually something here. You're starting a company. How do you deal with the, the fact that the company will actually consume your whole life? But I think early on is, is there's the people you're going to found it with and then the people in your life, whether it's significant other or even family members having that talk, like you're going to start this company and what it means and what the impact is on the relationships in your life. And so I think having those honest conversations up front is really important because if you can't have those talks, when you get fired or it's not working, <laughs> those talks or it's about money, those talks are way harder. So, so Mark, one final question. You started two companies now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, good and bad has happened through both, I'm sure. If you could give me one or maybe two things as advice to a first time entrepreneur, sure. what would you say? Focus on these one or two things, because uh, this is what I've learned over the years. First one's purpose. Like I started the first company, I was 22. I just kind of jumped into it, right? If somebody said, hey, it's going to be 10 years you're doing this, I would have been like, hold on a second, let me actually think <laughs> about this one. But I think having a very clear purpose, like why you're doing this, 
and the overall problem you're passionate about. I think deeply understanding that is really, really important. Like, for us, we believe that people are happy with amazing photography, and so we're all about that purpose and making people happy. And so I think that's the first foundation of, of starting. Yeah, having, having just a great purpose, and probably being able to communicate that purpose, obviously. <laughs> you have to learn how to communicate it and simplify it. Right. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and if you're passionate about that overall, you'll find lots of products to make. Everyone talks about the idea. It's like the idea is irrelevant. It's like, what's the overall problem you're passionate about? We love mobile photography. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how people take pictures, how they share pictures, how they edit pictures. So we actually understand the whole problem. And then we pick off products or little solutions we want to deliver. And if we were just like, hey, we love attachment lenses, that's eventually your idea is going to run out. Yeah. So for us, you, we're passionate about a bigger thing and, and a movement. We just happen to make products. Yeah. Well, Mark. Thank you very much for being here. I really quite enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, I'm sure our audience will enjoy everything you've said. So thanks for being here. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to go to Garage and see a startup that's actually thriving. Started looking for different solutions on the web. And nothing I found was really that great. So I was like, OK, let's build it myself. Then we're going to see three founders on the launch pad. We've designed a shopping experience that's very similar to having a conversation with an interior designer. Welcome back. Mark gave us some useful ideas about how to build a great team for any type of company. Now, I recently visited the office of another interesting startup here in Seattle, started by three co-founders who are just starting to build their team. Let's take a look. I'm in the offices of Joy with co-founder Vishal Josie. Well, welcome to our company, Mike. <laughs> well, thanks for having me here, and we're actually in a garage. Yes, that's true. That's, yeah, Mike's garage. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so, so tell us, tell us more about Joy. Tell us about the idea. Wedding is a very stressful situation for a couple. Right? They have to put a lot of pieces of their thing together. So what we are building is basically uh, everything about your wedding in a single place. So right from, right from uh, save the date to thank yous, everything in between, we kind of are trying to solve using modern technology. You know, so whether it is uh, save the date, invites, RSVP, your wedding website, your wedding app, uh, trying to collect your guest photos, sending thank yous, all of that is kind of unified in a single uh, platform. And the most important thing is that we are also building a social component to bring all of your uh, friends and family closer together. Everybody kind of contributes, talks about your wedding, takes pictures and stuff like that. And all of that starts building up together. And unlike any typical wedding website where after the wedding it becomes useless, right? Uh, Joy kind of lives forever because all of these things are put together and then like they, you can show it for your generations to come, you know? Yeah, so that's, great. That's, that's what Joy is. That's great. So I know you're at Microsoft for many years. Uh, it just seems kind of odd that a group of the people from Microsoft would actually attack this kind of problem. So, so tell us how that came about. I'll let Mike actually tell you more about it. Yeah, so you know, being the designer and kind of tech guy of the family, when my sister was getting married, obviously she comes up to me and was like, hey, can you help me build a website? So we started looking for different solutions on the web and nothing I found was really that great. So I was like, okay, let's build it myself. As soon as we were starting to build it, it turned into something that like, you know, was kind of useful for her, but her friends were starting to ask. That was when me and Vishal and Kaiwaya were like, hey, this can be something bigger than just a thing we're playing around with and building for my sister. It could be something that can be useful for everyone in a really cool way. Well, weddings are complicated, so you really have to have a diverse team to really kind of tackle this problem. How did you go about finding your team? Networking for the most part. Uh, but we were looking for people who were really passionate about the project and each one came in for their uh, own different reasons. So I'll let them tell you uh, how did they find Joy. They all seemed like engaging and energetic folks and as soon as I saw the polished product, I knew it was the company for me. I actually found Joy because I'm using it for my wedding. I met Vishal at a Women in Tech event and he showed me the demo and I just knew right then that I wanted to work for him. So obviously you're bringing in people that have a lot of passion about your product and that's really been your key. We invest in people over everything else. We believe uh, that passion trumps everything. Coding and design and all those skills can be learned. Uh, but we have people who have really, really deep-rooted passion about our product and 
we are doing things just like a family over here. We are basically like trying to make a difference in weddings and every day is exciting. We are looking forward to uh, making many, many weddings uh, this year and for years to come. That's great. Thanks, Michelle. Time for a break. And when we come back, we'll check out three amazing startups. All you do is upload a photo of your ticket and offtherecord.com does everything else. I'm talking to founders of three new services that I'll bet you'll want to use. But first, they're going to give us their best elevator pitch, and then I'll ask some questions about their companies. We also want your feedback on which of these startups has a service that you will most likely use. After the show, go to our Facebook page and vote on the poll. The startup with the most votes will receive two months of free membership at Galvanize, and that includes desk for up to three people. First up today, let's hear from Ritu about Circled In. You're up, Ritu. Thank you, Mike. Want to get your kids accepted in good schools, competitive summer camps, prestigious internships, all the way to college and scholarship, but not really looking forward to that painful and overwhelming admission process? Well, you are not alone. I'm Ritu Gupta, founder of Circled In. The main reason for that pain is students don't have a central place to maintain their data throughout the school life. So when they apply for any application, scramble and chaos happens. Not anymore. Circled In provides a secure, centralized online platform customized for students to consolidate their entire school life achievements. Students keep a live record of all their activities, both inside and outside school, in seven categories, from academics to sports to volunteering. They can also upload their certificates, awards, and transcripts. Data stays and grows with the students through changing grades, schools, even city and state. They can share their holistic profile with application officers for any application. By highlighting their holistic strengths and talents, they put their best foot forward and increase their chances of success. Sign up today at circledin.com. That was great, Ritu. Come on over. So where did you come up with that idea? Well, we personally experienced the pain of an application process when we applied for my daughter's middle school application. Even after spending three weeks in uploading all her records onto the online system, we were not sure what would click with the recruiters. We kept sending them all the records, and finally, it was her science fair project that got her accepted. But next application, we start all over again. That got me thinking, you and I have LinkedIn, whereas it's the kids who change grade every year, change school every three to four years, and they are in tons of activities, and they apply to so many applications in first 18 years of their life. So shouldn't there be a platform built just for students? So that is what Circled In is. It's a student-centric, secure, and customized for students platform where they can track and compile all their accomplishments and share with recruiters. Yeah, that's a great idea. Now, I'm sure you've been asked this before, how secure is it? How secure is the data? Very valid question. So security has two components. One is data access, another is security itself. So as far as access is concerned, in consumer account, only student has access to his or her profile. They can share the profile with admission officers or recruiters whenever they want and whatever portion of profile they want. Nobody else can see their profile. As far as security is concerned, there are five levels of security, and um, nobody can search and look at your profile without your permission. Oh, that's good. That's very good. So I know there's schools using the program, and families can use it for free, right? That's correct. So consumer account is free. Families can create an account and uh, track all their kids on one account, all their school accomplishments. They can share with admission officers, scholarship committees, coaches, and anyone who can help their kids get forward. Great idea, Ritu. I, I, think, I think you have some, a winner here. I really think it's needed. Thank you. Next up, we have a service that even your 16-year-old might want to use. Alex from Off the Record. Thanks, Mike. Offtherecord.com is the smart and easy way to contest any traffic ticket. Most of us are safe, responsible drivers, but every day 112,000 of us are pulled over and receive a traffic ticket. The first time I heard that number, I was shocked. If you've ever received a speeding ticket or accidentally ran a stop sign, you know how painful it can be. Not only are you out an average of $150, but your insurance rates are likely to skyrocket. 
That's why you need offtherecord.com. It's an amazing app that connects you with the best local lawyers. All you do is upload a photo of your ticket and offtherecord.com does everything else. No mailing in your ticket, no showing up for court. Offtherecord.com takes away all the hassle and saves you hundreds of dollars by keeping the ticket off your record. We have a 96% success rate and we offer a full refund if we're not successful. You have nothing to lose, so always fight your tickets and do it with offtherecord.com. Great job, Alex. Come on over. So, what made you and your co-founders create this app? What was the reason behind that? Honestly, it came about from personal need. My co-founders and I were driving back from a camping trip in three separate cars, and we each got a speeding ticket for going something like five miles per hour over the limit. We felt that was bogus, so we contested those tickets. But man, that whole process is a nightmare. It became clear very quickly that there needed to be a better way. So we built offtherecord.com, and now anybody can fight a ticket in under a minute. Well, that's, that's actually great. Now, Fighting a ticket obviously has some, some effect on your insurance rates, right? Absolutely. It's not uncommon for a speeding ticket to cause your insurance rate to go up by $50 a month. And it stays on your record for three years. So you'll pay an extra $1,800 in insurance for a $150 ticket. We think that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. Um, so my wife and I have a place out in Walla Walla, so we travel to Walla Walla quite frequently. And so if I'm traveling through Yakima, how do you find the, the best attorney for the Yakima area? So we do support Yakima, so we've got you covered. That's great. But at Off the Record, we welcome all attorneys to work with us. Our secret sauce is in the way we match tickets to attorneys. When you come to us with a ticket, we know which attorney has the highest chance of winning your case, and that's the lawyer you get. That's how we've been able to maintain a 96% success rate, and we're very proud of that. So what would be the one message you'd like to tell all drivers? Fight your tickets. Moving violations do a lot of damage to your driving record. So fight them. With offtherecord.com, you have nothing to lose anyways. Alex, it's great having you here today. Thank you for being Thanks here. Thanks a lot for having me, Mike. Our next guest is solving a problem of a different color. Lisa from Style Eyes. Lisa, take it away. Have you ever tried to remodel or refresh your home and found that trying to find products that match, coordinate, or simply just work took longer than the actual remodel itself? Finding products for your home should not be overwhelming or frustrating, but even as a professional interior designer, I've struggled to find products that match my client's vision. Like most, I start my search online, scrolling endlessly through search results, not being able to find products that match my client's color or style preferences. Until Style Eyes. My name is Lisa Peroni, and I am the co-founder and chief creative officer at Style Eyes. Now imagine, you find a vanity that's perfect for your bathroom remodel. Style Eyes works alongside you during the shopping experience, recommending coordinating paint colors, tile, countertop, bathroom accessories, and even lighting in designer looks that we call style boards. In just a few clicks, your entire room comes together. Visit the Stylize Facebook page to find out where to shop so you can start stylizing your home today. Lisa, that was awesome. Come on over. So I see you're solving a problem in a definitely different way. What's your secret sauce? We've designed a shopping experience that's very similar to having a conversation with an interior designer. To find products you love, you tell us about your room, colors, and styles you like, and we recommend style boards. So maybe you see one for your living room, and you love everything about that board, but maybe you're not a big fan of the area rug. You can swipe left or swipe right to edit that rug and find one that perfectly matches your taste. And once you have your board just how you like it, you can purchase those products or you can share it out socially. Okay, so that does make sense. So obviously you have a team around you. How have you been building that team? Well, we found the key to hiring the right people is finding individuals that can execute our business mission. Yes, we've definitely heard that from other founders today. And we're also looking for people that are willing to push themselves outside their comfort zone and embody our four core values, which are empowerment, collaboration, 
the willingness to have fun at work, and the vision to go big. So obviously, you're hiring. Yes, and in fact, the Seattle startup community is so vibrant, and there's a lot of people solving some really big challenges. We found that by hiring people that are truly masters of their craft, we can extend some really compelling opportunities to recent college graduates or graduates of programs like Galvanize. And because of programs like Galvanize, startups like ours can be matched up with that exciting upcoming talent. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things that I love about the Seattle startup community. Absolutely. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for being here. You did a great job. I appreciate it, and keep up the great work. Thank you, Mike. Now, be sure to go to our Start at Seattle Facebook page and vote for the product that you would most likely use. You get to decide which of these founders gets to work out of Galvanize two months for rent-free. It's time for another break, and when we come back, I'll give you my final thoughts on what it takes to build a great team. Welcome back. So one of the things I strongly believe in is that you need to find people who are passionate about your product or service. You should look past the resume when you're building the team for your startup. Don't make the resume the only factor. Many times, passion can outperform a great resume. Second, when you're evaluating a founding team member, look for people you've worked with in the past or worked on other projects together. There are people in your network who you will want to be in the trenches with. These early stage hires are a lot like marriage, and it won't be easy to break up. So make sure you're making a great decision. For more of my interview with Mark Burrows, check out Start at Seattle's YouTube channel. We'll post a link to that on our Facebook page. And remember to vote there for the startup service that you are most likely to use. Now thanks to Mark for joining me in the studio today, and thanks to Joy for letting me take the tour. We couldn't bring you this show without our generous sponsor, Seed IP. They'll help you protect your business ideas. And of course, thanks to Startup Grind for helping you bring some great local startups to the Launchpad today. Now, if you have an idea, get off your couch, go talk to people. Talk to all kinds of people. Follow your passion and just go start it. I'm Michael Grabham. Have an amazing day. <laughs>